Welcome to the latest video from Chula Bula Vintage. My name is Lisa Hartwell and this one's a little bit different from the previous ones. Previously we took a look at jewellery hauls from both eBay and Vinted. This one is a result of several trips out to local charity shops in my area and what I brought back to sell mainly on my Etsy site. So it's mainly vintage stuff but some of it ends up on eBay or even in my vintage store. So uh, take a look and I hope you enjoy it. Right, let's talk about this recent charity shop haul I picked up. First of all, although it was the second shop I went in, I'm gonna start on this side, uh, RSPCA shop. Uh, in Swindon um, and I'm going to build up to the better stuff but uh, first of all just this green oh it's filthy but it's green and blue pot honestly I have no idea why I bought it Be well I do kind of but I didn't buy it because I thought it was worth much um, it was 75 pence and it just reminded me so much of the kind of crockery <laughs> students had in the 90s and early 2000s when we were at university everybody had the kind of crockery that was painted like this it's probably dead cheap and it's probably nothing at all but it just was a bit of nostalgia for me and uh, you can see it's just uh, dishwasher proof microwavable no brand name so nothing special there then we've got the keels bag cost me a pound and probably isn't worth a great deal more i've already listed it on vintage for a couple of pounds um, but it's in pristine condition, it's not been used, so um, apart from a bit of dust, it's in really nice shape, makes a nice cosmetic bag or a pencil case. Then we've got this pot, which is like a preserves pot. It is a preserves pot, I'm sure. Uh, you see it's got this gooseberry pattern, very simple gooseberry pattern on the outside. Now the strange thing about this, apart from missing the lid, this one cost me a pound. I thought it'd make a nice trinket pot, pot and it's quite vintage looking. But also it has got a maker's mark, a quite elaborate maker's mark on it. And yet I have searched and searched and searched and I cannot find out who this company is that made it. It looks like CAPS, K-A-P with a little S or possibly that's an R-A-P, but I haven't been able to find it. The German writing there that says Gesafflich Geschutz, and that's my terrible German, basically just means uh, that it's legally painted, patented, legally registered. So that doesn't really give anything away. Um, apart from the fact it might be German. But uh, other than that, anybody, any ideas? I've done loads of searches for this and haven't been able to find anything, but I think eventually that will go on my Etsy store. Nice piece of vintage pottery. This was a good find as well. These Emile Henry French ribbed ramekins, kind of souffle dishes or... Uh, creme brulee dishes. You can see the Emile Henry France mark on the bottom. And these cost me £1.50 for three. They're not vintage. They do look vintage because all his stuff looks kind of vintage. Um, but £1.50 for three and I've already listed them on vintage for about £15. If they don't sell on vintage then I shall put them on eBay when they have an 80% fees offer. Um, and then this was just, I saw this and I could not resist. Didn't really care how much it might be worth because I figured I loved it so much, I was happy to keep it myself. Look at that face. Look at that face. Isn't it sweet? And it just underneath, it just says 2000, made in 2001. And then it has this on the side, which I didn't recognise, it's not something I've come across before, but I did a reverse uh, Google image search. And this is Moxie. 
Moxie is a pot belly uh, from Harmony Kingdom, apparently. No longer made, 2001, has been retired as a, as a design. So, so cute. If you see why pot belly, as in it's got a little lid. It's like a little trinket pot, pot I suppose. Put a rings in or something like that. So, so cute. It was that face. Look at that. And actually, because it's a retired one especially, probably £12 plus. And I think I paid £1.25 for Moxie. So, not bad. But I will struggle to give that one up. And this, I can't remember <laughs> which which of my hauls I bought this in. Um, but it's just a, a very good condition Disney Store mug barrel mug good size in that kind of blue purple oh you gotta love winnie the pooh and i paid a pound for that and that's already on my vintage uh, shop or whatever you call it on my vintage um so we'll see how much that one gets so that's from the one store and then the first store I went to, oh, I did also pick up a couple of pieces of clothing, but I really still don't know what I'm doing with clothing. So I picked up a Uniqlo turtleneck sweater. I've never heard of Uniqlo. Seeing it everywhere now, I've seen this one thing. Uh, didn't realise it was fast fashion, but it was a really good quality sweater. So I picked that up for £3.30 and I picked up a, a weird fish vest top for £1.50, which was just really kind of unique in that it had this crossover back thing it's from 2017 and again neither of them are worth lots of money but I should get my money back and probably double it so those will go on my vintage as well the other shop I went to was Uplands Enterprise and it wasn't really a charity shop as such and I got chatting to the lady who was running it and she basically they had about six uh, outlets around Swindon um, before the pandemic hit and then of course when the pandemic hit um, they couldn't work and the point of it was less about making money from the selling the items although obviously that was important to keep the charity going the point of their charity was really that they gave young people with special needs a chance to learn important retail skills so that they could go out and get jobs in the retail industry. And of course, COVID hit, everything shut down. They kept the one shop, the one outlet, obviously that closed down, but when they were able to start working again, people were still donating, they still had lots of stuff, so they went online. Um, so they sell on auctions and that sort of thing, like many of us do. Um, and of course, those young people are now learning e-commerce skills. Um, so, which of course, fantastic skills to learn. Um, having e-commerce skills is brilliant. So they do all, everything from the research on objects, they take the pictures, they list them, uh, they help package and sell them. But because they've got this one outlet, when it's stuff that they're just decided not to sell online for whatever reason. I'm not quite sure their reasoning. Um, every now and then they just put a table of stuff out the front and say, pick up what you want, pay what you want and just give a donation. So I thought it was a really good enterprise. And I took a little look at their, at their table. Actually, that Winnie the Pooh mug might have been on that table. I can't think now. But talking of Winnie the Pooh, Got these fabulous ceramic Christmas themed coasters, Disney store coasters. Um, Piglet is in really good condition. It's a Disney store exclusive. Eeyore, not quite such good condition because you've got the, you can see just the, the rubber has rubbed off on the feet underneath there. Both those already on my vintage. The next item I picked up, which I knew was just a mass produced item, but it had the L for Lisa. And it also, I thought, was quite uh, uh, retro in its design. Looks very art deco. It's just a nice tall latte mug. Again, doesn't look like it's ever been used. 
Um, I looked it up and I was right. It was just a mass produced shop, but because they're initial mugs and people like initial mugs, people like things that look a bit art deco, people like things a bit different. If I don't keep it for myself, then I could probably sell it for a five or six pounds, something like that. Then these are my two favourite. I'll start with this one because I don't know anything about it and you might know something more about it. This is basically a Japanese teacup or a sake cup. I don't know which. And it's perfect. I mean, I, I don't joke because quite often things are look, look a, even when they're very underused. Crockery in charity shops often have just little scuffs or dirt or something on them. And this one just just seems like so pristine and so perfect. It's got this gorgeous design on the outside, which if you see the white, I think it must be hand painted because you can see the white is raised there. And actually, if you feel the whole thing, there is some raised paint on it as well. Just lovely. And this is the, I think it's this way around. I don't speak Japanese, but I think it's this way around. That right no maybe it was the other way around but I've reverse searched I've done all sorts of searches and I can't find anything lots of things that vaguely resemble the it because there are a lot of um, cups around like that but I think I, this is going to go on my store on Etsy because it is vintage looking and um, if nobody wants it as a Japanese teacup because it is one on its own it's not a set just would make a lovely trinket bowl or something like that. So that was a lovely find, she says, breaking it. No longer pristine. But then the big find was this. And I fell in love with this. Again, like always, my first thought is, oh, I could keep that if I had any space left. And it's a bee, a bee bowl. It's a gorgeous bee bowl. Look, it's got the bees all the way around. This kind of crackle glaze. There's a bit of white something. that Somebody's obviously put something in it. It's left a kind of white dust inside that's stuck to the side. Almost like powdered sugar, but it's not. Not that I tested it. But And then if I lift it up, you can see the design is all around. Is it lovely? And the logo, which is upside down there, is... I don't know if you can see that. Let me put it down. There we go, is India Jane, and I looked it up. And India Jane is still selling that bowl on her website, currently at approximately 48 pounds. So, how much did I pay for these items at this store, as it was simply a donation? Honestly, at the time, I thought I'd overpaid. I'd been. I thought I'd been extra generous by giving twelve pounds because I just thought, well, I like these items. I'll keep them if if they're not worth anything. Um, so I gave twelve pounds. But it looks like that bowl alone, I could well probably list it for about twenty five pounds on eBay before obviously all the fees if I sell it. But um, yeah, really good find. Really pleased with that. Loving uh, this whole haul, particularly little Moxie. He's between Moxie, this bowl, and the India Jane bowl. Those are my favourites. Although I do, I wish I could find out more about this preserve pot. I show me it hasn't got a lid, but because uh, I just really like that, and it's obviously got a maker's mark. Just don't know who the maker is. So if you know, put it in the comments. If you like this video, click the thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, hopefully I'll have more for you soon. Well, I promised to bring you videos when I do really big charity shop hauls, and I certainly did one of those the other day. Uh, four charity shops in Swindon, and bought from three of them and bought quite a lot. So I've only got a small space to work on today, just a little table. So I'm gonna go through them bit by bit, shop by shop, 
so uh, this is the first shop it was actually the last shop I think I went to the RSPCA but since they were just the smallest amount I thought I would get those on the table first and then I can pack them away but because uh, these are particularly uh, a little bit delicate they are soapstone I believe two hippos hippopotamus hippopotami which are I believe Kenyan I, if this is because oh there's a little chip there I hadn't noticed that before hope I didn't do that that's a shame um I believe they're Kenyan based on the coloring this light pink coloring of the stone is uh, typical of Kenyan soapstone um, and the design is very typical of Kenyan soapstone artists but that's about all I can tell you about it this one was £1.50 and this one was a pound the little one but they also have these markings on different markings but in the same place so this one has like the turtle marking on it reminds me very much of aboriginal art that um and this one although it's under the sticker you can see just about see that it's kind of a lizard or salamander of some kind so uh, if you know anything about the artists on those do let me know i'm a bit disappointed about the the chip though actually there's one on either side i think so it might be meant to be there and then there's uh yeah that's probably the nostrils then oh phew not damaged after all has this one got nostrils yes that one's got nostrils as well that's okay i feel a bit better now i was really worried i'd knocked it for some and somehow managed to chip it now going on to the jewelry now you like know i like my vintage jewelry but actually i rarely buy jewelry from charity shops um i won't go into huge detail but i don't like being watched particularly um for some reason charity shops even when the jewelry isn't worth much they often put what they consider the better jewelry under the counter right by the tills so if it's busy you haven't got a chance of actually standing and having a really good browse through what's there and if it's not busy you always feel like you're just being watched by the person at the till because they're just standing there expectantly waiting for you to buy something so occasionally I do ask for things to be brought out so I can have a look if something catches my eye but it's always a bit uncomfortable um, because ooh, something out in the garden making a racket uh, there's always something a bit uncomfortable about it because then of course there's the expectation that you're actually going to buy as well but anyway that's just me I'm a bit funny about things like that so I was in the charity shop and they had this separate kind of tray of jewellery that you could pull out and it was near the desk but it wasn't right on on the desk so I was able to pull it out onto a little table and just go through the brooches I almost immediately recognized that this was exquisite <laughs> by exquisite I don't mean exquisite as in it looks beautiful um i mean it is a nice piece of costume vintage costume jewelry but i recognized it as the brand exquisite uh, which we've covered before i think on here and it's a normal brooch gold tone very yellowy gold tone and that kind of um shell mother of pearl design inset in the middle and then it turned out this one was also exquisite. This one looks, I don't know if that's porcelain or some kind of resin. It feels like porcelain. Uh, in the silver tone leaves, little blue rose in the middle. And this is actually a very pretty scarf brooch. So both of those were two pounds each. In fact, all the brooches were two pounds each. This one I thought had a real sarah coventry look about it a particular era of sarah coventry i know she did she, i say she every time i know they sarah coventry the brand did designs like this but it isn't sarah coventry it's actually got uh west germany written on the back there somewhere and it's another scarf brooch but it's got that nice 
again porcelain like design inset on it and then this also west germany like a sun or a you know depicting something like some but all the stones are there it's got this lovely design in the middle i really like this one and again it's got west germany on the back and it's a scarf brooch so the grand total there was eight nine ten ten pounds fifty at the rspca for all those pieces okay let's move on to the Marie curie shop as you can see this one fills my table a little bit more starting with the least probably interesting from a vintage point of view this plate is a millennium plate achievements of the 20th century it was only 99p and it is from hemmer nothing particularly special but it is in good quality condition probably not worth a great deal then this little cutie i love my cats you might know that i love my cats um silver plated and it's a ring holder so you put your rings on the cat's tail and this would have been from around the 60s or 70s uh, no markings on it i did pull the sticker up to check and that was 99 pence and then pictures now i asked the lady how much of the small pictures were in the shop and she said 50 pence each which i couldn't believe um, regardless of the actual pictures the frames are worth more than 50 pence each uh, although this one of them is custom framed so you won't be able to reuse it i don't think um but they were 50 pence each and when i got my final total it wasn't till i got home that i thought hang on she only charged me three pounds for the lot or 2.98 for the lot so that was 99p that was 99p which meant she only charged me a pound for three pictures she obviously didn't see their worth but i love them uh, now in the 70s foil pictures were all the rage i will add that I was a child in the 70s. I was born in 72, so um, not really at the time my thing, but I was aware of them because everybody seemed to have foil pictures. This one is of ducks flying. It's not signed or anything, but on the back it says Lombard, England. So presumably the whole thing came from Lombard, England. They also produced this frame, which is a wooden back and then like very thin metal, hammered metal with ridges frame that's kind of been custom built around the picture. So that was really quite a nice little find. As was, we shall stick with the theme of foil pictures for now. This Audrey North picture now I remember, I think it was my grandparents had an Audrey North picture in their house in the 70s. If your parents owned, you know, their home, had a home or your grandparents in the 70s, chances were they would probably have something like this hanging on the wall. Audrey North was quite well known for this style. It was actually uh, like a engraved foil picture, very Look at the, the way the color, the uh, light shines off the otter there. Signed in the corner, Audrey North. And uh, these are quite popular again, these foil pictures. So uh, I think that one will sell quite well. And then this one is not foil. And you've got a reflection of me and everything in there. Sorry about that. But this is called Red Starts and Robin, and a Robin, sorry, and it's Archibald Thorburn. It's a print from 1920, of a picture from 1924. It is signed right down in the corner there. You probably can't see it very well. Um, now, the original of this sold at Bonhams recently for nearly £5,000. Sadly, my 50 pence picture is not worth quite so much, but it is still a lovely 
picture and a lovely print. And more importantly, the frame is exquisite. I mean, it's amazing. It's this beautiful dark hardwood with, uh, you can see the beaded kind of design around the edge. And then these lovely gold metal, gold tone metal um, corners. So that's a really pretty picture and I cannot believe I got it for 50 pence or less than that. Three for a, three for a pound is what, 33 pence each. Amazing. So that was the haul from Marie Curie. And in a minute, we'll move on to the bigger haul, the biggest, which was the Salvation Army. And I don't think I'll fit it all on the table, so I might have to do it in bits. OK, this was all from the Salvation Army and I've got it, I'm have going to have to put it in two parts because I've got a couple of pictures I can't fit on at the same time. And I think the total for this spend was £13 or £13.50. So uh, I got a lot for very little. Let's uh, start with the Dartington Crystal Heart. Uh, it's a paperweight, cost me two pounds, and you can see it's still got the Dartington sticker on the bottom. Dartington crystal started off as Dartington glass. I don't know if you've heard of them from Devon. Uh, basically, started in the 60s as a social enterprise by the Dartington Hall Trust, who was set up to just regenerate the area. And their designs are really clean and simple based on kind of Scandinavian design, because originally when they set up Dartington Glass, they brought, uh, I think, Swedish craftsmen in to teach the art of creating dart the glass uh, items. This one is based on a Frank Thrower design. Frank, Thr Frank Thrower was their chief designer, extremely famous designer, died in the late 80s and a lot of their current stuff even is based on designs by Frank Thrower. So a uh, lovely paperweight, really nice. You've kind of got this textured glass at the top and then it's all shiny at the bottom and on the sides. And I know about, about Dartington a lot more because when I lived in Plymouth, we used to make regular pilgrimages to the Dartington glass outlet centre they had which had more than just Dartington in it and particularly was a wonderful place to go at Christmas there was always something going on there at Christmas and we always spent far too much money there then a couple of items I don't know much about but they were 50 pence each these guys who are mice stoats oh I don't know uh, one looks like he's having a real go at the other one he's got he's waving his umbrella you can see there at him and he's uh, this one on the right looking very chastened i thought it was in perfect condition but actually i've noticed that ever such a slight chip off one of the ears but for 50p that's pretty good and it did have a sticker on probably said more about what this was but it's very well worn so i don't know anything about this if you do please let me know and this little house again 50p has a sticker on. The sticker says Yves Rocher. Yves Rocher are a perfume company. Now I know they do do some ceramics and miniatures, like doll's house type miniatures ceramics, um, but I've never seen them do anything like this. So I'm curious. It does look like it's a well stuck on sticker, not like it's moved over from another piece of something. But uh, yeah, I didn't know Yves Rocher did anything like this. So if you know, let me know. That's becoming my mantra. If you know, let me know. This, another 50p piece, nothing special. It's a Grosvenor China saucer and it would make quite a nice little trinket dish. That side looks all right, but this side is a little bit more worn and discoloured. And it says it's Old English Grosvenor China. J and G is that J and G so that was 50 pence so nice little trinket dish for somebody there 
Well, when I was shopping, there were loads of honey pots. I saw honey pots everywhere, and that's not a euphemism. Um, so this one, thankfully, was the first one I saw. Really lovely design, very good shape. It's got the, the bee on the top and the bees on the side. I'm glad this was the first I saw because I might have ended up spending more money buying more honey pots because I would have I would have bought this as soon as I saw it, even if I'd already bought something else. This is from Wilson and Purdy in Devon, who is a good ceramics company. And uh, yeah, that's a really nice honey pot in very good condition. And then finally for this table. Oh, no, I haven't mentioned this, have I? So we've got this Japanese style embroidered vanity case, £2.50. They're not uncommon these vanity cases but this one is in very good shape on the outside the inside is not bad actually a little bit of dirt on the mirror and uh, I don't know if you can see it's got a mirror and just a little pouch there so uh, yeah that's I quite like that so uh, that would make a nice vanity case cosmetic case for somebody and then finally on this table but not finally for the Salvation Army we have these Fortnum and Mason mini vases and I saw them 50 pence each I thought I'm gonna get all five because I can sell them as a set and they're in good shape no nicks or cracks a little bit of dirt I can probably get off but uh, they're the kind of thing I think people perhaps look for for, say, a wedding where they want a little, you know, a little flower display on each table and they want them in matching vases and things. So somebody might buy them for that. But Fortnum and Mason, you can't, if it's in good quality, uh, in good shape, you can't really go wrong with the Fortnum and Mason stuff at that type of price because it is still so popular. And these are the final two items that I got from the Salvation Army. We'll start with this one, which is, and I'll try and turn it so you don't get too much glare off my, and see me reflected in it, but it's limited edition print of Stow on the Wold. If you don't know Stow on the Wold, it's in the Cotswolds, beautiful part of the country, one of our favourite towns. And you can tell uh, the Cotswolds, little towns and villages by their yellow stone buildings, that traditional yellow stone that they have. Uh, this is by Philip and Glyn Martin, and it's number 634 of 850 and it cost me three pounds. Now, Philip and Glyn Martin are brothers and they basically have traveled around the country or they did travel around the country for this series of portraits of Britain and did these pictures and then they were reproduced and they only did 850 of each picture. So uh, definitely worth more than three, uh, more than three pounds. And um, the only problem is that I might have problems selling it because my mum is likely to want to snap that up for herself because she'll like that a lot. And then I walked in to the Salvation Army and the first thing I saw was this and instantly fell in love with it. I'm trying to get it at a good angle. I'm not going to, am I? It's just the wrong kind of light today in this room. It's all reflecting off the glass. But saw this and it's a tapestry picture of a Madonna and child in a, an Orthodox Catholic tradition. And that's about all I knew about it when I picked it up, except I figured it was Eastern European based on the writing at the bottom. Quick search and I found out it is the Black Madonna of Chestakova, which is in Poland, also known as Our Lady of Chestakova. So it's a kind of tapestry picture. I couldn't even tell you how old it is. It looks old, but it's a tapestry picture of the original, uh, although there's some poetic license because 
you know, there's a, a variety of pictures base you you can find based on the black madonna but um not always exactly like the original although it does have the scratch marks on the cheek um so the writing there the larger writing is uh says black madonna of chester cover i i managed to work that out then there's some smaller writing i guess in polish and i'm going to have to do some research to find out what that says a beautiful frame it's in this lovely gilt frame um lovely decorated frame now this is a bit of a tricky one because it was in the salvation army um being a religious organization they have a rule that they don't sell religious items like crosses and things um and she said it was free they just give them away it's and i said well i can't take it then because this apart from the fact i think it's lovely this means nothing to me religiously i'm not catholic i'm certainly not orthodox um I said, I don't, I don't feel like I should, I feel like I should leave it for somebody who it means something to. She said, no, it appealed to you, you should take it. So I took it and that kind of leaves me in a quandary because it doesn't feel right to sell something like this. But it's also not something I would put on my wall. I just think it's beautiful, you know, in the same way that I like to resell vintage things. The reason I do is because I love vintage items i find them beautiful and um, they appeal to me and i ended up buying so many that i decided i better start selling some and set up a shop so you tell me what would you do in a situation like this with something like this it obviously would matter to somebody it would mean a lot and it would should be displayed it should be on somebody's wall um so you know, I felt a bit bad taking it, but she was very insistent and she said, you know, this this obviously is is important to you. It will be important to you. So you should take it. So I did. So it was free and I know nothing about it. So please share any knowledge you have of this kind of item. It might be that it is quite modern and it's just been made to look old, but it does look like a very old piece of tapestry cloth inside so I can't say for sure, but it's just a beautiful piece with that lovely frame as well. And now since I have you at my mercy, I will just add these few other items. Whenever I pop to the post office with things to post, um, there is a tiny charity shop next door and I always pop in and I almost always come out with something. And so this is the result of two trips to that charity shop. The first items are these two Allen Bay glass items. Now, Allen Bay, if you don't know, is it's focusing on them, is a place in the on the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight is a little island off the south coast of the UK and we used to go there on holiday for quite a number of years when we were young children. Allen Bay is famous for its different coloured sand and you used to be able to and I'm sure you still can you used to be able to get like glass lighthouses and the reason for the lighthouse is just off Allen Bay you're very close to the Needles and the Needles Lighthouse, and they used to layer the sand in these glass lighthouses. So you had different layers of sand, and we did have one at one point, but I think all the sand got mixed together in the end. But there's also like a chairlift that will take you down over the multicolored uh, cliffs onto the beach and back up again. So uh, anyway, Allen Bay, that's in the Isle of Wight, and Allen Bay glass is obviously a glass studio that's based there. So we've got this traditional lighthouse, but with this kind of feathery pink swirl inside. Really lovely, it's in really good condition. There is, just as I was rubbing my fingers across the top there, there's two places where it's a, just tiny, tiny little rough bits. You can't actually see them particularly with the 
human eye and I don't know if they've actually had just ever such slight dings or if that's just from the manufacturing process and then we've got this pyramid paperweight with the blue inside again lovely piece this has got a significant chip on the side in fact if you look from the top you can probably see that it's point 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 and then a flat flatter piece there but it's still a beautiful piece and um, these cost me a pound each so I cannot complain about that at all then the second shopping trip I picked up these Scots of Stowe mugs a really quite heavy mug uh, one pound for the two and that I believe is the same Stowe as Stowe on the Wall that I mentioned earlier from that picture that I picked up. And as I said, these were one pound for two mugs. And they're these fruits. So you've got the look like lemons and blueberries in kind of I think it's considered hand painted sponge wear this. Um, but if you disagree, let me know. They're in good condition. And then these beautiful pieces are 1970s Tintagel pottery. Two different kinds of vases. So they were a pound each. And they have got Tintagel pottery on the bottom, quite faint. Um, so like a bud vase and then this tiny vase here. And the style of the design, if you don't know Tintagel, See, so you get a geography lesson as well as a vintage lesson when you watch my videos. Tintagel is in Cornwall in the UK. You've probably heard of Cornwall. Um, and it's this beautiful art studio pottery. And this design is the green dragon design. So you can see the green dragon kind of weaves its way around the pot. And it's got the dragon eye there and the dragon eye there watching you so yes that was a two mini charity shop trips just to add to my haul video because otherwise they don't get a video of their own and i like to share all my beautiful findings i hope you enjoyed that video or series of videos i do have an update for you on some of the items the bee bowl that has already sold on ebay and also Moxie, my little foxy friend, he also sold on my Etsy store and the person who bought it, who bought it for a friend, was just loved it as much as I did. So hopefully the friend will appreciate the gift and Moxie will have a very good home in the future. Also, that picture that I showed you, the woven picture, the tapestry type picture uh, from of the Our Lady of Chestercova, did manage to do a little bit more research on the wording that's right at the bottom. And from what I can understand, and this is based on me having to Google Translate and do all sorts of weird searches, I think it was created by a weaving society of a place called Gliniani or something along those lines which again is in Poland and they are a place that were very famous for kilims which are kind of woven rugs um, now they had a huge industry there of those but during the uh, while they were part of the USSR, those that industry kind of disappeared there and has only in recent decades started up again and they're trying to renew the tradition of the weaving. Uh, so it suggests to me that that picture actually is pretty old, uh, but I can't say for sure because, of course, the weaving society may have continued even during the uh, time when when those factories had disappeared. So who knows? If you know more, please do let me know. If you're enjoying these videos, please give us a thumbs up 
and subscribe so you'll know when future videos are available. Let me know as well, do you like these videos? Would you prefer the jewellery videos? Or do you quite enjoy a mix of the two? I'd really like to know. Don't forget you can find me as Chula Bula Vintage on Instagram and on TikTok where you'll see some of the shorter videos I create of some of my finds and asking questions and that kind of thing related to my vintage finds at charity shops and online and I hope to have another video for you soon. Thanks for watching.